Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we will be covering the for loop. But before we do that, let's talk about your last assignment. In your last assignment, I wanted you to take some code that you had previously written that basically switched based on the player, whether it was player one, player two, or not selected, and to convert that using an enumeration. Now here we can see I have model develop open and I have this code in question right here. So we need to convert this to using an enumeration and to do that, we're going to create an enumeration outside of our class. I'm gonna make this public and we'll just simply call this player like so. Inside the braces, I'm going to create a player one and a player two and a none selected. Now we can see here I have a little red squiggle. This means that there's an error, and that's because I have not defined this as an enumeration. So I just put enum like that. Next, we're going to change this player right here, and instead of being a type of int, we're going to make it a type of player, like so. Okay, now on to the switch statement. Now we're switching on the player. So for the cases, we'll start by typing player and dot, and we'll put player one here. For player two, we'll do player dot player two. And for nuns for the default statement, we're going to get rid of that since we don't need that anymore. And we'll do player dot none selected. Like so. Oops. Like so. And now this will work exactly as we will expect it to do. And then, of course, we have this compile error here. Let's solve that. And we're going to switch back to Unity here. And you can see that this is reloaded. Now we have player, and we have a drop down here that has player one, player two, and none selected. We'll select none selected. We'll disable the cube, and voila, it says please select player. OK, in this video, we're going to be covering loops. And more specifically, we're going to be covering the for loop. Oftentimes when working with programs, you need to do work and oftentimes you'll need to do it a lot. And to do that, you'll actually create a loop. And a loop will simply iterate over one section of code many, many times. And actually use loops all over the place. In fact, even in games, we often call it the gameplay loop. And this typically means player moves, enemy responds, and maybe we calculate, say, any bullets that were flying, and at the very end of that loop, we just start all over again. And we keep on doing that until either the player has achieved their goal or the game enters, say, the fail state. C Sharp has many different kinds of loops. And the first one is called the for loop. The for loop looks a little bit janky when you see it because it's combining multiple statements into one. Let's break this down. Let's say, for instance, we want to create a program that would output hello unity 10 times. Well, this is an excellent place for a for loop. To define this for loop, we put four and then we'd put two parentheses. Now within the parentheses, it contains three different parts. The first part, it contains an initializer. The second part contains how long the loop, the loop will run. And the final bit contains the incrementer. Or if you need to decrement, you can do that. So in the first section, we're going, to, we're going to create a variable to store our increment. In this case, I'm going to put int i equals 0. So we're, we're creating the variable i, and we're setting a value to it. Now, some of you may be wondering why, use the, why name it i. Well, you can name it whatever you want. But through conventions, people will understand exactly what you're doing. i also stands for iterator, means because we're iterating over and over. Generally speaking, when you see a for loop, most people will use I. And then if you want to put a for loop within a for loop, then people will use the letter J. Again, you can call it what you want, but whatever you do decide to call it, make sure to be consistent. Once you've defined that, you're going to put a semicolon after it. Now we're going to define how long this loop is going to run. We want this loop to run 10 times. Remember, we set our variable of I to be zero. And the way we have it run 10 times is we put i is less than 10. This means this expression will evaluate every single time the loop runs. But right now, we haven't determined how much i will increase by. And this is the third part of the expression. This is where we put i++, meaning after every end of the loop, 
we're going to increment i by 1. And then once i reaches 10 in our case, and because we want this only to run when i is less than 10, then the loop will end. And then once we're done with that, we put an open brace and close brace. And within these braces, we'll run whatever code we want to run within that loop. So in this case, we'll put debug.log hello unity, and this will print out hello unity 10 times. Now loops have a couple keywords that you can use. And the first one is called break. And you've already seen that used within the switch statement. And when the code path reaches the keyword break, that loop will end and the program will resume as normal. The keyword continue, all that simply does is then causes the loop to start the next iteration. For instance, there may be a time where you're doing some processing of some code and then for whatever reason that you, don't, you no longer need to process it anymore. And what you would do is just simply use continue and that would start the next iteration of the loop. Now, loops are really useful and you'll be using them a lot, but there'll be often times where you mess up with your loop definition. In this case, we put i equals less than 10. Well, what happens if I put instead of i plus plus, I put i minus minus? Well, what would happen is that each loop would decrement the i value. So we'd start off at zero and then we'd go to negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. But here's the problem, is that the loop would never exit. What you would have is an endless loop. What it will appear is that your program will just simply freeze because it's just iterating through that loop and there's no way for it to stop because you haven't put a logical break in that loop. So you have to keep in mind in doing, doing that. Okay, let's see how the loop works in action. Here we are back at our Unity project. I'm going to open Hello World again. In this case, I'm going to delete all this stuff here. Now, one nice thing about working with loops is working with arrays. Loops and arrays go really well together. It's like peanut butter and chocolate in C-sharp land. And we'll demonstrate this by creating an array of scores. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to keep score for each player, and then we want to get an average of them. Well, first let's create a variable for our scores. And now I'm going to switch back to Unity here. And I'm going to select my cube. And you can see here we have our scores. So let's, let's just add a few. Here you can see I put the size of four and this gives me four fields. So here's our scores here. Now I could get the average of them by simply hard coding each element position, but instead I want to loop through that. Okay, let's write the loop now. First I'm going to create my average variable and we'll just set this to zero. Okay, now let's create the loop. We're going to put a four and then we're going to put an open parentheses. Now we're going to define the iterator. And I'll just call it int i equals zero, like so. Next, we want this to go through all of the elements of scores. And we can type scores like this. And scores actually has a property. If we hit the dot property, you can see we have something and it's called length, like so. Remember, our scores are indexed with zero. So if we have three scores, the first element is going to be zero, the second element is going to be one, and the third element is going to be two. Yet, if we do a scores.length, it's going to return three. There are three elements within scores. So we're going to do less than scores.length, like so. And then we're going to simply increment it like that. And now let's add in that score. And we do this by doing average equals average plus, and then we can do scores. And now for the index we're interested in, we simply put in i like that. And now this is going to add all those numbers together. And then when we're done, we can simply print out the result. We can do, we can write the average is, and then we'll put average, 
divided by. Can you guess? Scores dot length. Like so. And that is our first loop. Okay, let's run this. I'm going to run my game. I'll select my cube, and if you keep an eye on the console, we'll now disable the Hello World script. And you can see that the average is 20. It's gone through these numbers, it added them together, and then divided it by four. Now, onto your task. What I want you to do is create an array of names. And these will be, this will be a string array that you can add into Unity itself. Then, in your on disable, I want you to loop through those names and then add them into a, another string. So basically what you're doing is you're adding each name to the string and make sure to put a space between them. And then, once the loop is over, I want you to print out those names. So you're gonna print out all the names that are contained within those arrays. So it's simply write debug.log would be players, colon, and then you'd print out the players' names. Welp, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you liked any of the content, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be covering the for each loop, which is a little bit different, but also somewhat the same. All right, I will see you in the next video. See you then.